Good morning. Welcome to the Church of St. Ignatius Loyola. Please stand. My dear friends in the Lord, we gather in faith to bid a final farewell to our sister Catherine and to celebrate a life well lived. Although we are assembled in grief, let us be comforted by our belief that she now enjoys a new life and rests in the loving embrace of her Creator. And so let us begin our prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In the waters of baptism, Catherine died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May she now share with him eternal glory. Please be seated for a brief word of welcome by Christina Miser Joseph. Good morning, dear family and friends. We are called together to celebrate the life of Catherine, our most beloved sister in Christ. Father Yesalonia, cantors, musicians, thank you for this Mass. Thank you to the parish of St. Ignatius Loyola, which has been the spiritual sanctuary for Catherine and her family. She was married here, baptized children here, and celebrated countless family milestones here. Whether the events were joyful or sorrowful, Catherine leaned heavily on this congregation and school community, and it was always a source of great comfort and belonging. Thank you all for being here or joining via live stream to affirm the life of a remarkable woman. Her father, Valentino, and other family and friends are joining us from the Philippines. To you, Val, we know how much she loved you and missed you every day. Rest assured, she is now reunited with her mother. Our hearts go out to the Gaffner family who has suffered tragic losses in the past year. Catherine was instrumental in helping the family through the pain of losing her sister-in-law, Ivy, just last February. Ironically, we are now processing the pain of losing Catherine so unexpectedly. So many of you here have rallied around Bill, Jack, Gemma, and Josie just to make it to this day but we must all continue to support them on their journey forward. Whenever I think of Catherine, the oft-quoted wisdom of Maya Angelou comes to mind. People will forget what you said. People will forget what you did. But people will never forget how you made them feel. And if you are here today, I am sure that Catherine made you feel loved. Her heart was wide open, like Christ's, radiating unconditional love. She respected everyone from all walks of life, and all her relationships were meaningful. Catherine showed up for each and every one of us, each and every time. 
She was the ultimate cheerleader. They say it's not about how much you do, but how much love you put into what you do that counts. Catherine fiercely loved her work and was awarded for it many times over, but she cherished her work colleagues even more. She felt enormous pride in being part of NBC, which was her second family. To, to her countless friends and family, she was thoughtful, kind, and loyal. She would drive all night just to give you the shirt off her back. And she would find the fun in it, even if it wasn't apparent to the rest of us. But we all know her greatest joy was being a wife and mother. Bill, she knew you were meant to be together from the moment you came into her life. Jack, Gemma, and Josie, you are the reflection of your extraordinary mother that shines every day. Words are not adequate to convey the outer beauty and inner grace of Catherine, body and soul. She was the most effervescent person I knew. To spend just five minutes in her company or even in her periphery was to have sipped champagne or drunk the Kool-Aid, depending on the circumstances. She gave enhanced meaning to the mandate live life to its fullest. Her boundless energy, gracious spirit, and limitless heart were superhuman. Weave all this together with a moral intellect and an infectious personality, and you have someone that the Lord would take too soon, at least from our clouded perspective. God works in mysterious ways, often incomprehensible to us, mere mortals, but it is exactly at times like these that we must trust in his judgment and all-knowing goodness. Catherine had an uncanny ability to wing it, to somehow rise to whatever the occasion called for. And the peace that I hope we can all take away from this is the knowledge that she left behind a massive, loving army of people who will carry on her legacy while she wings it in heaven with the pair of gilded wings she was born with. And let us pray. O God, to whom mercy and forgiveness belong, hear our prayers on behalf of your servant, Catherine, whom you have called out of this world. And because she put her hope and trust in you, command that she be carried safely home to heaven and come to enjoy your eternal reward. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Please be seated. Bill, Jack, Gemma, and Josie, I want to thank you. Thank you for sharing your mother, your wife, with us. You know that you were her most precious gifts, and I want to let you know and I speak on behalf of all of us, she was a special gift to each one of us. And we are the ones who are blessed to have known her. And we gather here this day. We gather in sadness to mourn, yes, but we also gather to honor her memory and to celebrate. To celebrate a life well lived with us, a new life in paradise. And we gather with you remotely from the Philippines with her family and all of us here to recall this extraordinary woman. It's not an easy task for me up here to talk about someone as gregarious, as huge in life. How to capture her? Not that that is ever possible, but how to reflect in a true way what we experience as this faithful daughter of God, this wife, this mother, this friend, this perpetual volunteer. We know her, and because of her, we are better for it. In preparing for this funeral mass, I met with Bill, his brother, and his friends, to discuss this liturgy and ask them to select readings of Scripture. 
and the readings could not be more perfect to reflect her life and her love. From the Book of Wisdom, we hear the words, and I'll modify it a little bit. She who pleased God is blessed, loved by God, and possesses, possesses an abundance of blessings and grace beyond her years. What does it mean to please God? Have you ever thought of it, pleasing God? And as Christina said in our word of welcome, she was a devout Catholic. This family, this parish family, nurtured her. And through her, each one of us nurtured. Is that what it means to please God? To merely show up for Mass or liturgies such as this? She was a faithful, regular member of the Wallace Hall family mass downstairs. She loved, as I heard from Bill, her relationship with her NBC TV crew. She enjoyed, she relished, she reveled in and with them. And it meant so much to her to have the career that she did. Even at the expense of that precious commodity, sleep. Or as she would say, what's sleep? And Bill said she would be there. The alarm set. Never leaving the house without the nails polish and the lipstick on. But the rest of the makeup and the hair was done in the van, the news van. The little nap in between assignments in the van. Treating all of us all of her family, this NBC crew family, as her own. Hopefully she taught those of you who are here a lesson. A lesson of being relaxed in the very skin God has given you and presenting it to others in a way that brings God glory by courtesy, by compassion, by truth or a simple word, in loving. And then I was reminded, given what uh, Bill and uh, Kat's friends said, these big bags she would carry around with her, filled with God knows what. I had to look up what a hamburger coin purse was, but I guess that was among her favorites. This bag. I had this image of Santa Claus. What's in Kat's bag? But it was always something for every one of you. Something special, a treat. A sign of affection, yes. But a sign of a woman who knew you and knew what would uplift your life. There's a warm glow in this room, in this church. It is cats smiling with us. And she now wants to see on the face of each one of you a smile. And so before the end of the day, Jackson, Gemma, Josie, Bill, go to a mirror and smile. And you will see Kat's reflection. Let us give praise to God. Let us thank God for the gift, the wonder of this beautiful, elegant, wonderful woman to our lives. We give praise to God. And let us honor God by reflecting in our our lives what we learned so patiently from Catherine. Will you let me be your servant? Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. We are pilgrims on a journey. We are travelers. And 
and bear the Lord. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Catherine, we beseech your mercy that she who did not doubt your son to be a living Savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful, O Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and dark angels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the host and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Catherine, St. Ignatius Loyola, and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. 
be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Timothy our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Catherine, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found was blind, but now I see. T'was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. The Lord has promised good to me his word my hope secures he will my shield and portion be as long as life and yours through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. Tis grace has brought me safe thus far. And grace will lead me home. 
Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, grant, mercifully grant that strengthened by it, our sister Catherine may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Trusting in God, we have prayed together for Catherine, and now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see Catherine again and enjoy her friendship. Although this congregation will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. Et perducante in civitatem sancta Jerusalem, carus angelorus Et cum Lazzaro condam paupere, eternam abeas requiem.